fans on the upper deck. Okay, we go way back, in case this gets really familiar, like him just lifting me into the chair. Yep. It's Tuesday, September 13th, and Michael Weatherly is my co-host today. Hi, hi. We, this is weird for us, because we go way back. We go back to the first Bush administration. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. Are you if you want to, If you want to go political, I early, mean, we really do. We really do. Yeah. Now, back when the world was young, when... Uh, soap operas, were, soap operas were on ABC. That's right. Nobody, have, yeah. nobody had phones on their cameras no. and cameras on their internet. So no. No. We had a no open flame policy, nope. which was unique because for Christmas they would give the actors candles and a note reminding us that there's a no open flame policy in the building. Sure. So it was like, here's a candle, do not burn it. That's right. Yeah. Right? Do you remember well, that? The world is still as paradoxical. It's just gotten a lot stranger. And we'll have jo Joseph uh, Levitt tell us about that later. Yes, yes. The world oh my gets gosh. like this, yeah. and then it's like this. Now, you have procreated a great deal. I'm a little curious. So, how are your kids? <laughs> They're great. They're big. Mark is good. Mark is great. Okay. Yes, yes. Father of said children. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Atta boy. I love this lady's laugh. Oh my God, it's amazing. I brought her. <laughs> she She's incredible. mine. She's my plant. You yeah, can't yeah. take her. Yeah. She's good. I bring That's her to dinner with me. She's a good laugh. So, so how are you? No, wait. You have one. One? Mm, no, no, I've procreated myself no. a great how, deal. Wait, how many? I have three. No, you didn't, no. Yes, I do. I have a 20-year-old who we can't talk about for many legal reasons. Oh, well, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Young August. And then uh, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Oh, my god! And let me just tell you, my two-year-old, Liam, he's, I, he's a real Weisenheimer. We were in a restaurant the other day, and we got up to go uh, to the car. And I turned, to, you know, you check to make sure the kids are with you. Yeah. You do that. Okay. And I look, and he's got sunglasses, a they're, wallet. They, by the way, they're always there. Look at, <laughs> look at that. My barn door is open. Oh, my okay, gosh. Oh. <laughs> it's live television, ladies. What can I tell you? So, so Hang I, on. I, Hang on. Just, is it Groundhog Day? <laughs> you can call it anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's not February 2nd. That's right. I think I just got a glimpse of Puxitani Phil, everybody. <laughs> well, he's got some whiskers. Now, so I turned to look at my son coming out of the restaurant. He's got a wallet, car keys, sunglasses, and a pack of cigarettes. And <laughs> This is a four-year-old. He's two. Okay. He's right. two. And I say, hey, Liam, what do you got there, buddy? And he goes, neighbor. 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 So the woman at the table next to us... <gasps> Uh, was when we went back into the restaurant to return said items, was frantically searching through her purse. You mean he took her yeah. wallet, her cell phone, her cigarettes? This is what happens with youngest children, right? Yeah, right. You, you just don't pay quite as much attention to them. No, that's true. That so they turn true. into petty criminals. That is true. We, we used to live uh, in this building... We used to live in, in this, this building? No, 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 no. We used to live in this building before we moved. We used to live in this building and they had, uh, you know, like a valet service. So you pull your car into the garage and then there, there would be a man that would take the garage. That's the car fancy. Apart. It was fancy. It was so mm. nice. Um, we were renting. It was, we didn't live there. It was a temporary city. You don't have to stay. We so. didn't want to, we wanted to stay there, but we didn't. Anyway, so this is when you know you've crossed over into the, uh, parenting, the bad parenting threshold, where okay. you've just, you've checked out entirely. We uh, had the kids and the dog and the bag and the weekend bag and the thing, and all of a sudden we're in the elevator going up and I go, I know this story. Where's, yeah. where's Joaquin? Yeah. Where's the little one? Well, he was asleep in the car seat, yeah. so we just didn't notice, yep. but we got the dog out, thank God. <laughs> And the valet is now joyriding around town, not realizing that there's a, there's a kid in the back seat. I, I mean, can you imagine? We got to get our kids together because that's going to be a, a petty yeah. criminal with the abandonment issues child. Yeah, it's fantastic. We're going to yeah. have, there's a whole therapy yeah, yeah. session. You, what about the five second rule? This is the thing. Yeah. And I don't know, do you, use, do you read in the paper about uh, there's a new study they're doing about the five second rule? Yeah. How do you feel about the... Um, you know, I, I 
it depends on what you drop the thing in or on. It's like if I drop if I drop the donut onto my own floor okay. in my house, I'm fine eating it. If right. I drop it into a mucky puddle in the middle of Central Park, I'm not, I'm leaving it there. If you drop your cigarette in a strip club. Right. You're like, ah, that's fine. Do I five second rule? You know, I mean, this is when easy I drop question. my cigarette in the strip club, I always <laughs> say that's fine. That's fine uh, because the shoes are only worn within the strip club. Context is everything. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So remember that, girls. Yeah. I find. I think. I think also. If I, here's the thing with the five seconds. Five seconds means it's only been right. You saw it fall. You know where it's been, and you're like making a decision in the right. right. The, well, like how bad can it be? Right. The two-hour rule is well, I could have rolled around a little. Somebody could have kicked it. It might have been. So right. I think that's why it's fair. Well, I, I mean, but again, it's another, another question is whose five seconds is it? Okay. Is Wait, it a, one Mississippi five seconds? <laughs> is it a five seconds like when you're on? That's called a southern five right. seconds. When you're on the when you're on the the Soul Cycle bike five seconds mm. when they're like five more and you're like it's been five seconds. <laughs> Stay out of the saddle for five more seconds and four and you're like oh my god these are the longest seconds ever and it's you realize it's really the Kelly rip of five seconds is that's five seconds yeah <laughs> five seconds and with five coffee seconds. that was five yeah, seconds yeah. it was yeah. not even it just happened that's so true you look so beautiful by the way it's just astonishing as we go forward the hair and the no no go. <laughs> I love when the audience applauds. They're like, yeah. it really is. It's something. I mean, she's. <laughs> she, she really is something. You can't she's been even see the long. tape. <laughs> Hold it back here. Hold it together. Yeah. Can I tell you something? <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story right now. So I did a photo shoot, and Christopher Buckle did my makeup, and he did this thing. They uh -oh. use facial tape, and they tape your face back. It's Shh, like, that's my secret. No. Let me tell you something. It was the greatest <laughs> moment of my life when he took the tape away. Um, uh, and the, you know, and everything just went. Uh -huh. right. I, I just want to get that, find that tape, and get that tape back here. Yeah. Because, I believe that more people are using tape than we're aware of. You know, I can already see the commercial. You know, Ke hi, I'm Kelly Ripa. Have you ever used <laughs> no, facial it'd like tape? No, be like this. The uh, Ripa tape. <laughs> I guess. Do you want to look younger? Sure, we all do. <laughs> It's, oh my God. it's kind of an amazing thing. Anyway, uh, I want to congratulate you. You are, uh, you've got this new TV show. So first okay. of all, um, I, CBS loves you so much because they let you go from one show only to like snag you so fast and put you in another show. It or was, did they you know. poach you from one show and put you in? How did it work? No, it was a very, well, who knows how anything really works. Right. It's television. Right. Gelman, anything? Can, no, don't, don't ask know. him. My we, God, <laughs> he doesn't know. Uh, I, uh, I was very happy. I love NCIS, great program, great. and I love doing it. And they are coming back for season 14. They've got uh, Wilmer Valderrama, and they've got all. It's, yeah. it's the whole crew is back with a lot of new, interesting stuff going on. I just reached a point where I thought I was playing this sort of eternal frat boy, youthful guy who gets slapped on the back of the head for being silly. And as I approach 50, I'm like, it's like Bob Denver on Gilligan's Island. At a certain point, you know, yeah. Yeah. like Gilligan with silver hair, you know. Yeah. Hey, yeah. little buddy. You know, yeah, yeah. it just doesn't. I get it. I get so it. So I thought maybe I'd aged out of that a little bit, you know, and I needed some facial tape. So I, <laughs> I, I started looking for new things, and wouldn't you know it, that uh, lovely Mr. Leslie Moonves uh, uh, stepped into the <laughs> opening and said, "Would you like to be bull?" Bull. So, I mean, yeah. bull. Do you, do you know what? Okay. Okay. So guys. Lean it's in. not a cow. Lean in, lean in. It's okay. He's Bull. playing Dr. Phil. I swear to God, right? I mean, that's a fair. I, it's a character based on. Okay, Dr. the truth is, I am Dr. Phil. <laughs> it's like a Mission no. Impossible episode. I am Dr. Phil. No! That would be really super be weird. Crazy. If there were just lots um, of Dr. Phil's around. Yeah. Although we'd all understand each other. So better. he was like a forensics, he was like a forensics court. Analyst, right? He would cho choose juries. He would help people. Choose. Yes, I love that you're simplifying it. I can simplify it even more. Um, he is uh, somebody who takes trial litigation and jury selection or deselection, and by doing a deep data dive and using analytics and science, <laughs> takes. No, that's not it at all. Right. right. Um, 
it's really when you, you, you know, we all have gotten the jury duty summons. Yeah. And, you know, this is part of our great uh, um, experience as Americans and in this free society. We have to contribute, and, and that's part of our job as yeah. uh, citizens. So when you're on that jury, you know, Right or wrong, yes or no, did the guy do it or didn't he? Did she, was she a bad thief or is my, did my son really mean to steal the car keys from the lady at the thing next? <laughs> and we make these decisions. You think that you're just a jury. No, you're actually being analyzed by both counsels and they are finding out stuff about you, Ripa, you can't believe. Oh, I know. Oh, they know about, they know about the argument you had with Mark two weeks ago about whether or not to use the pink thing versus the, I don't want to say what the thing was, but <laughs> right. it was like these, they know about your private life. They've done, you know, and as we get more uh, exposed with Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and all this stuff, that stuff's out there, man. So mm -hmm. they can look at a jury and see all that data and then start to use it to decide the case or a presidential election because these are all sort of situations that we have to be aware of. Holy yeah. cow. Boy, and we're going to find out. You sound so much smarter now that you're playing Dr. Phil. Well. <laughs> it's the new teeth. I got the I got the Dr. Phil teeth. It's incredible. Now, you know, what's incredible really is that Dirk Benedict uh, let me use this wig. It's from the last season of the A Team. And uh because you know I've been bald since 25. You know. And this thing just fits like a glove, doesn't it? The fact it? that you just dropped the name Dirk Benedict in here. Just like who that. I've had a crush on since Battlestar Galactica. Oh yes. <laughs> the, Starbucks. The first Battlestar Galactica. Do you remember the when the Starbucks, you know about. the Starbucks coffee came out? And the first thing I thought was Dirk Benedict. Dirk Benedict. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, and nobody thinks Starbucks, but somebody lost in that one, in that equation. I know, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I remember like remember when you well no, you were you were I wasn't born you were yet. never a little girl. But <laughs> little girls Little Unless we're role playing, that, that's that would be the only way that might. Like possibly. when we would play, my my friends and I would play, you know, family, and we would have our babies. My baby was always <laughs> Starbuck. <laughs> this is my son, Starbuck. Because oh. <laughs> oh. I loved Dirk Benedict. You loved Benedict. Dirk Benedict. Well, here, let me. You can use the wig. Hold on. Let me, let me take my face tape off. <laughs> we learned so much today about each other. Hey, uh, speaking of babies, um, Alec Baldwin and his wife Ilaria welcomed their third baby. Wow. How about that? Yeah. Alec is very potent. He's a very he potent is. man. Yes, he yes he is very potent. Now here's the thing about this the baby. This is uh, uh, Raphael Thomas. And, Raphael Thomas. And, and oh, don't no. we want to make sure? No, I'm sorry. This is Leonardo. Leonardo. Oh, yeah. Well, you never really know with him because yeah. he's got. Uh, it could be that they switched the babies in the hospital and he got a fake baby instead of the real baby because you know he had that happen with his art. Where he had the oh, art yes, that was switched right. out. Yes. So you, this could be a Baldwin thing. Yeah, I just, He should check. I would do a DNA test right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Make sure that thing is bring your art appraiser in and check the baby. I just read that in the newspaper today. I yeah. just read that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. It's like, a crazy, crazy thing. fake art thing. I know. The great thing about you is you're so authentic that nobody could ever, ever copy you. Me? Yeah. Oh. For I'm better or worse, <laughs> Kelly, you are. You are incomparable. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just a copy. <laughs> I'm just a copy. Of I'm wondering, who are you more like, your mom or your dad? Oh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I like to say that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. Uh oh, now I see the wheels are turning. No, You're I'm like, trying to be like, I, I, I'm. Who do I uh, offend less? I'm, I'm short like my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have my mom's reclusive nature. So, uh, there you go. Wow. <laughs> Short and reclusive. <laughs> like I don't get any of that. <laughs> yeah. I could have been tall and outgoing, but instead, um, hey, listen, we we do have a huge show today. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is here. It's a huge movie. I'm, this movie. Snowden. Now, and I, I misunderstood because I got a screener and I right. thought it was about a snow day at school. <laughs> uh, you know, you get snowed in. And I, yeah. so I go in with a totally, somebody gives you a glass of orange juice, but it's really milk. And you go, what is this? Right. At first I thought, oh, it's going to be about this guy who's snowed in. Man, it's Man, not that. it's not about that. No, it's no, about it's a not. whole different level of things. No. And one of our very favorite people on the planet, Carol Burnett, is here. <laughs> She's, she 
he's written another book, and for those of you who are such a fan of the Carol Burnett show like I was, this book is so great because it really gives it you... It walks you through. It walks you through the entire show. I mean, mm -hmm. and I mean, it takes you through her day, it takes you through the audience questions, There's, it takes you through sketches. I loved it so much, so much. And of course, the newly crowned Miss America is here. <laughs> Miss Arkansas, now this girl I know, and I've said, I said it yesterday, when she was born, her mom looked down at her. And when she named her child, she knew she would someday be Miss America because her name is Savvy Shields. Right. Come on. It's a superhero name. It's a superhero name. Yeah. That's Miss America. I'm name. Savvy Shields. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's really good. Best name yeah. ever. Ever, ever. Okay, now turn on your. Um, okay. Turn on what turn I like on to your call the mixed heart signal. light. Yeah. Okay, you ready? So, Neil. No, you had a reference. So what do we do with this? <laughs> I know a Neil. I'm just I saying, know. I don't know. If you saw um, <laughs> it's time for takeoff travel trivia. It's, it's 1992 again. Yeah. Hi, I'm on my cell phone. Let me call yeah. you right back. Yeah. That's now, exactly remember it. Remember when cell phones That's were so really funny. big? Yeah, yeah, sure do. Hey, today's trivia dancer is Caitlin Hughes from Houston, Texas. Good job. Good job. I really find these to be a mixed signal because we're yeah. flying in the airplane, yes. yet we have these in our hands while mm -hmm. we're doing it. Well, first you're about to take off. That's when you should be. Yeah, but they never hand these to the pilots. Oh. Pilots, <laughs> pilots don't use these ever. You're we are ground transportation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, bring it back. Bring it back. This hey, is on a... the phone is uh, Karen Gilmore Ooh. from Shelby Township, Michigan. The whole button. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, oh, look at that. Uh, hey, Karen. Hmm. Hey. You're combining water sports with your ATV. <laughs> Karen, you're out of control. <laughs> <laughs> you, Hi. Uh, Hi. Hi. How are you? We're great. How are you? Good, good. Uh, so what are, you, what are you doing today in Shelby Township, Michigan? Oh, I'm going to paint the outside of my house. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, there you go. Yeah. Seriously? Wow. Yes. By, your, by yourself? No, my husband's going to help. Ah. Okay, now wait a minute. Are you just going to be riding around on that thing? Around, you know, a little bit more on the top. And then he's really the one doing it? <laughs> Do you guys paint a lot of houses? No, no. Well, I painted it before, uh, about 10 years ago, so we're painting it again. Oh, okay. that's good. And then right. what color are you painting it this time? Um, kind of a putty color. It matches the windows that we had installed. Okay, uh -huh. that sounds amazing. <laughs> Send it. Hey. Real amazing. I'd much rather be riding that ATV on a beach, though. <laughs> All right, now, um. Karen, don't get ahead of yourself, and be very careful. We don't want to read about this tomorrow in the paper. Yeah. Karen, okay. somebody fell off a ladder painting their house. Listen, Karen, we're going to spin the wheel, see what you're play uh, playing for, okay? All right. <laughs> Here's a great prize, Karen. The Four Seasons Resort in Punta Mira in Riviera, Nariet, Mexico. Seven Nariet. days, Woo! six nights. Yeah. And, my goodness, that's and, a long time. Listen to this. You're in an ocean view casita. Wow. Hey, you like spa treatments? Because you got a you got a spa treatment. It per gets person. Better. Per oh person. my gosh. And yeah. that includes feet, by the way. They, they'll they'll do stuff with your feet. <laughs> And now this trip is provided in part by Hotels.com. It's a prize valued at eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. That's an expensive trip. Wow. wow. Ocean View Casita is fancy. Ocean View Casita is that like a like a house? I think it's like, like a little a, house. Like a yeah. house. Like an that's why yeah. it's so expensive. Yeah, that's expensive. Karen, do fancy. not screw this up. Yeah. Yeah, there's no pressure here, Karen. You have but 20 no seconds and yeah. only one guess, okay? Michael Weatherly is going to read you this question. Oh, Good my luck. goodness. Okay. okay. Now, yesterday on the show, uh, we had the beautiful Sophia Loren. We sure did. And um, <laughs> who did Sophia say told her that she had won her Academy Award? Cary Grant. That's uh, right.
Congratulations, you and the guests will enjoy seven days and six nights at the Four Seasons Punta Vita. The Four Seasons Resort Punta Vita is located on the northern tip of picturesque Banderas Bay in Riviera Nayarit. This beachfront resort is set on 400 acres and offers spacious casita-style guest rooms and suites, four restaurants, a serene spa, two world-class golf courses, and much more. Your price is valued at approximately $18,250. Karen, first of all, very rarely do I pay attention to the package. Once in a while, I'll look Excuse at it. Excuse me? No, I mean the, the, the trip package, oh, where they yeah. show the trip package. Right. But this one, they, they have a couple. The couple appears throughout the package, but the one where he's sitting on the edge of the pool and all of a sudden her head pops out of the water is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. So just go back. We need to go back and take a look at that later on because it is funny. It's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, Karen, congratulations. Now you get to help make the day of a lucky you. member of our studio audience who will receive a $500 appliance package from Cuisinart. Woo! So please pick a number between 1 and 224. 223. Oh. Very decisive. Finally. 223 has clearly called in sick for work. <laughs> and in the event That's of that... to be seen uh, on camera. I, and we, Oh. You found it. Oh, you found it. Oh. Wait, wait, I, I see why. Because yeah. he, you're 224. Right. And then that's 223, yes. 222, 221, 220. Yeah, that's not that's that's not how it goes. Wait a minute, I figured it out. She could be sitting next to number seven. I'm not kidding. There's okay. no rhyme. There's no reason. rhythm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, we got a big show with Joseph Gordon Levitt when we return. Still ahead on live, Carol Burnett. We'll talk with Savvy Shields, the newly crowned Miss America. And coming up next, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Thank you. You look gorgeous today. Oh, well, I think this whole thing. <laughs> um, so uh, we love having you here. You are such a tremendous talent. Did you, you two say nice to meet you, or have you worked together before? No, no, no we just met. No. Oh, you're kidding. Right now. Yeah. This is on live television. <laughs> I understand. Now, this is something I find immensely entertaining uh, conceptually. Mm -hmm. You are writing a musical with Channing Tatum? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, a friend of mine is writing it, but okay. yes, yes, it was our idea. Okay, and yeah. you're, are you going to be in the musical? Oh, yeah. No There's kidding. gonna be lots of singing and dancing. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, I hear that there's a rating attached to it already. Is there? Are you aspirationally going for an uh, like a? R? It's a it's a rated R comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, doesn't that make dancing a little more difficult? Does it make it more difficult? I don't yeah. know. I, I, I know or does it just make it a lot better. Yeah. I'm yeah. Not sure. yeah. <laughs> the NC-17 rating is the one it's you're really. It's not quite go there. No, no. Right. I, I'm excited. Do you remember? Like, have you done a lot of uh, uh, musicals? You know, the truth is, the very, very beginning. I've been doing this a long time. I'm I'm 35 now, and I started when I was uh, six. Wow. And um, and it kind of began because I I was doing like community theater. I had this one music teacher. Her name was Miss Karen, and uh, still one of like my favorite people ever in my life. And she, you know, taught piano lessons. My mom took me to, and she she like had a choir that my mom took me to. And she also did these musicals with kids, like five, six, seven year old kids. Right. And we would do our versions of like you know Peter Pan or Guys and Dolls or Grease or things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I've always I've always loved doing musicals. Um, but I never got to do a movie musical, and, and I've always wanted to. And you I've, did that great dance uh, sequence in the 500 Days. Thanks, man. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. The, the, the yeah. Hall and Oates. Yeah, that's right. That's that right. great. Is that what got everybody thinking? Maybe you should do a musical film. You know what? After that number, yeah, people are like, all right, so let's do let's do a movie musical. And yeah. I wanted to, but couldn't just. I, I I only wanted to do it if it was like really the right thing. And you know, Chan and I have, have wanted to do another movie together for a long time. He and I are old friends. We've done three jobs together. And uh, the writer of this movie, um, he knows Chan because he wrote 21 Jump Street. And he and I go way back. We were in a movie together, a little indie drama called Manic a, a long time ago. So we were talking about, all right, what if, if you could do any movie, 
what would you do? And I was like, I've always wanted to do a musical and I want to do a movie with Chan. And we were like, <laughs> let's write a musical for me and Chan. And we kind of came up with some ideas and uh, I'll tell you about them later. Okay. You know, we're still working <laughs> okay, on Okay, okay, okay. But uh, here's the takeaway from this. No, but you know Chan what? Chan is his nickname, yeah. okay? Oh, I, like, I just got right. that. Is well, what his friends call him. Any, anything you do is always fascinating. So yeah. we wanna, I want to definitely hear some more. Yeah, let's take a commercial break. Mr. Come back and talk about uh, Joseph's secret face-to-face -face meeting with Edward Snowden. Stick around, you're not going to want to miss it. So that's a uh, scene from Snowden, of course. You play Edward Snowden. Um, how aware of you were, the, did you follow the story as it was developing? You know the truth is, uh, when Oliver Stone, the filmmaker, uh, first offered me the job, uh, well first I was just excited because I'm such a fan of, of Oliver Stone's, but I realized I didn't know almost anything about Edward Snowden. You know, I heard the name, we've right. all kind of heard the name in the background, but when I asked myself like, wait, what exactly did he do and why, and I, I realized I didn't I didn't know the answer, so I had, I had a lot of learning to do for myself. Wow. Um, you know, it's it, I was I was watching that scene and I thought, are, are, do people really watch us if we don't close our computers? Is that true? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because Weatherly's really concerned about that. Yeah. Computers or, or your phone or anything with a camera on it that's right. connected to the internet. Uh, yeah. I'm so now you and you went and you actually met the snowman. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Falcon, the Falcon yeah. in the snow. Were you nervous about that? Because when I when when I was being briefed on this segment and I heard you had gone uh, to meet him, I thought that's a that to me sounds really dangerous. You went to Russia. Yeah. I, I honestly it was the first time ever in my life that I was like, is this going to be safe? I had never you know gone and done research for a part and actually wondered about my safety and you know spoke to my wife and my mom about it and they right. were concerned like I guess you would be. Yeah. And, Did you have um, to go through a series of like getting to the airport then you get in this car but there's a decoy car and there's another guy. Yeah. I was half expecting some kind of antics like that. The truth is it was pretty normal and boring. I got I went from the airport and you know went to my hotel and the next day I went to an office and sat with him. It actually wasn't that crazy. Did you go by yourself or did somebody come with you? Uh, I mean, I was with, you know, the film's producers and okay, things like that. Okay. But then once we were talking, it was just me and him and uh, and his longtime girlfriend, Lindsay Mills, who's played by uh, by Shailene Woodley right? in the movie. Yeah, of course. Um, and uh, the three of us just talked for about four hours. So, the, you know, just briefly, this this man, Edward Snowden, uh, leaked NSA secrets. Yeah. And, and that uh, and, and hence fled to Russia. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, because well, he was afraid of being arrested or because he was afraid of being killed? Do you know? I mean, I think he didn't know if he was going to survive doing it or not. Uh -huh. uh, he worked for the NSA mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's true. I mean, he, he did break the law by giving the classified information to journalists. And that's mm -hmm. an important distinction. It, it went to journalists. It mm -hmm. didn't just go directly like right. on the internet. Right. Um, but. The thing is, the NSA was also breaking the law millions of times every day and, and violating our rights. Right. So it's it's not simple. It's complicated. There were laws broken on both sides. Yeah. Uh, and and the question is, you know, which which side was worse? Right. Wow. Boy, you make such good career choices. <laughs> Thank you. Really <laughs> I mean. Make sure you check out Joseph Gordon-Levitt's performance as Snowden. Yeah. So it's such a pleasure to have you here. Questions. We all have right. so many questions. Right. Please ask away. Okay. Ready. Number one. Okay. Here's a question I've never asked what? anybody before because I know that you go through a lot of coaching and it's a whole pro it's a whole process a to process. become Miss America. Absolutely. But yes. do they teach you what to do after you win? No. Because you just walked in here like you had been Miss America all your life. Oh. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, you dream about it for, yeah. forever. I mean, you think about what that moment would be like, but it doesn't ever happen in real life. It happens in, like, dream space. Right, you know right, I mean? right, right. So whenever it actually happens, you're not prepared for it. And so I didn't actually know whatever I did whenever I was crowned until I watched the video. And so I'm thankful I didn't make that much of a fool of myself. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> that is fantastic. But, I am just realizing, I, not only have I never met a Miss America, oh. but I get to now tell my daughter for the rest of my I'll be like, 
Back in 2016, I, I met. Back in my day, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. I know. She's all four, I, so oh she my gosh! Has to win. All the contestants the whole week kept talking about how we're making so many memories, we're making yeah. so many experiences that we'll remember forever. And so the whole, the joke the whole week was back when I competed for Miss America. <laughs> the whole time, that's what everyone kept doing, and it was just, it was a good time. You're 21 years old. Yes, You're from uh, Fayetteville, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. Really? Yeah, yeah. Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. It I seems love like it. such a sort of New Jersey accent. What? Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Yes, what? yes. South I have been in Atlantic South City for a yeah. while, yeah. so yeah, maybe yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's but. it. Now, you performed a, a jazz dance I did. as your, oh, as your um, I did. talent. Did. talent. Yeah. Can we do a little jazz dancing, just for fun, just right here, a little bit of jazz oh, dancing? Well, I, high heels, maybe not. Free jazz. Free jazz. Free jazz. Well, you, you're not wearing high heels right no, now. No, it's good. Okay, come on. Fine. Are you going to turn us around right now? We have to. I don't know. Can we do that? Oh, my God. Interpretive free jazz. That's my new talent now. Oh my gosh. We're not wearing the proper undergarments for dancing. That's true. Neither am I. Neither am I. Flips and stuff Commando. Like that. How long have you been dancing? Because I understand you're oh also in, you're an art, is it art history? Yeah, major? I'm an art major. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an yeah. art major at the University of Arkansas. And wow. hopefully, whenever I graduate, I'll be able to work in a museum or teach at the collegiate level. And yeah. the dream, the dream is to create and to be able to, you know, composition my own work. But wow. I'm a dancer. I've been dancing since I was three years old. And so, creative expression, going with the art major thing was kind I of... I dance like a three-year-old still. Oh! <laughs> I mean, as your talent show, you know, we're good to go. But I had to do my talent as my dance. I mean, I love it more than anything. And to perform on the Miss America stage is something that I'll never forget. Yeah. yeah. You've been do but you been started out on pageants when you were, what? 13 years old. No yes, kidding. Ma yeah, I was Miss Arkansas's Outstanding Teen when I was 13. And so I won my very first try by the grace of God and knew then that I wanted to be Miss Arkansas. What's the strangest thing that you have to learn how to do? Like juggling machetes? Or what do you have to learn how to yeah, do? Yeah, what's the thing? Oh, juggling machetes. I don't know. I, I assume there's got to be some trick. From? You know. I think that the, the strangest thing that you have to learn is walking in a swimsuit. That is the strangest thing. Huh. I mean, that is the most unprecedented situation in your entire life. In high heels. In right? high heels. They don't let you most walk in unprecedented. In no, a, and so, but I mean, right. and that in itself, what I think is so cool about the Miss America organization is that if you told me two years ago I'd be doing that on national television, I would have told you there's no way. I would not right. have the confidence. I would not be secure enough in who I was. But because of the Miss America organization and what it does for young women, it completely changed my perspective and it made wow. me the savvy that I'm designed to be and I walked on stage in a swimsuit which beautiful is beautiful kind of and hilarious. stylish <laughs> it's miss america we're happy for you congratulations oh again It is incredible, you know. I still say, let's bump up the lights to you my do? wife yeah. Yeah. after Think sex. I'm like, let's <laughs> bump up the lights. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, I just want to say, on behalf of all of us, we love you so much. Oh, yeah. It was very funny for me to read this book, which I tore through because it, it, you've been such a huge part of my life and such an influence and a role model for me. And uh, when I, I, I saw what I thought was a mention, when you talk about all my children, I was like, oh, she's talking about our show, oh, yeah. all my children. Because you had lunch every day, you yeah, watched all my that children. That was back in the covered wagon days before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before you could tape it. Yes. So uh, we, when, when I was doing my show, I said, uh, well, I have to have 12 to 1 o'clock for uh, lunch, you yeah. know, because go to Pine Valley. AMC is on. And, you know, yeah. we got to find out what's happening to Haley. Yes, poor Haley. And uh -huh. Erica. And, yes, oh, Erica. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, so... Tell me about, like, because the book is so fascinating. Thank and it you. really does, it takes you through the day to day. Yeah. What was, like, one of the biggest uh, sketches or one of your favorite characters that you had there? Oh, wow. Well, I love doing, uh, I love doing Eunice. And yeah. I love doing, uh, you know, in the family. Yeah. And I love doing uh, Mrs. Wiggins. Mrs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you ever find yourself doing a little Ms. Wiggins just oh, around? Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. the thing is, too, you know, Tim would always try to throw me with new dialogue. Yes, right. <laughs> And I said, I can't laugh as Mrs. Wiggins because the IQ fairy never visited her. Right. <laughs> which means she wouldn't have a sense of humor. No, no. So I'd have to go, everything would go above her head, you know. So when you see Mrs. Wiggins doing this, you yeah. know, like she's biting her. I was biting my finger. To stop from laughing. <laughs> from, <laughs> right. To keep from laughing. But the thing was, Tim wrote those uh, characters. Yeah. Conway wrote those. And, but originally, Mrs. Wiggins was going to be a doddering old lady which I could play now, but uh, <laughs> but then I went into costume fitting and Bob Mackie, our brilliant oh, designer, gosh, said, Mackie. you know, you've, you've done a lot of old ladies recently, let's make her this bimbo, you know, and he put me in this push-up bra and the wig and the whole thing, and then he... Uh, I put on this tight black skirt that he had had in the, the closet for years, you know, and I said, Bob, you're going to have to take get in in the behind because I, I, uh, I'm flat back there. Yeah. And, and he said, no, stick your behind into the skirt. Yeah. And that's how the walk, the Wiggins walk Can happened. you show us the yeah. walk a little bit? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, I want to. I want to learn a little bit of it. Come on. Okay. I got. I got. I got back, so yeah. I don't have to worry well, about that. And people thought that I was padded back there, but it yeah. really was. I, I, it, it's like yeah. This. Yeah, that's it. I like this. I got to dance with Miss America, and now I'm doing the Wiggins walk. This is exciting. Hey, listen. We're gonna take a commercial break. We're gonna find out what artifact from the Calvinetto is on display at the Smithsonian. Tomorrow on Live, Neil Patrick Harris. If you want to see that curtain rod dress that, that she saw in the window and just had to have, it's in the Smithsonian. That's right. And as that, it should be. That was uh, the brilliant Bob yeah. Mackie. Yeah. yeah. So it's not again. That's he, amazing. Yeah, he designed 60 to 70 costumes a week. Oh. Everything we wore. 276 shows. Do the math. In 11 years, it's over 17,000 costumes. That's why they called him Bob, because no one had time to say Robert. Right. That's, That's true. Right? It was like, Bob, we got to get this out. That's also why he didn't have time to take in the rear end of Mrs. Wiggins' That's skirt. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I love that uh, each show uh, would end with you tugging your ear. Yeah. Uh -huh. And who was that in a tribute? That was my grandmother who oh, raised me. Uh, yeah. And so when I got my first job on television many years ago, I called her and I said, I'm going to be on TV, Nanny. She said, well, say hello to me. And I said, well, I, I, don't, I don't think they'll let me say hi, Nanny. You know, right, so right. we worked this out. So it meant all through the years, hi, Nanny, I love you, I'm fine. Then later on, hi, Nanny, I love you, I'm fine. Your check's on the way. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the audience wants to say something to you, too. I'm pretty sure that they all want to say a little something. Oh! <laughs>